know, a bunch of abstract math, and we want to know how it actually applies to economics. Um, so first, uh, what we have will kind of apply to supply and demand. So we identify a list of commodity quantities. x1, x2, all the way up to xn with what we'll call the commodity bundle and we'll represent it as a vector x. So this is a vector that has entries x1, x2, all the way up to xn. So that's a commodity bundle. And uh, in particular, we impose that all these values are positive. So we cut off all the negative values. So this, this vector, xn, is such that well, x1 is greater than or equal to 0, all the way up to xn is greater than or equal to 0. Uh, and we call this set the positive orthont. Right in two dimensions is the positive quadrant, in three dimensions is the positive octant, and in general for n-dimensional space it's the positive orthont. That's the word for that. And uh, if and and we call also call this in economics we call this commodity space. If pi is the price. Of the ith commodity, then the cost of purchasing the bundle X. is, well, it's the price of the first thing times the number of the first things that you buy plus the price of the second thing times the quantity of the second good that you buy plus all the way up to the price of the nth thing times the number of the nth things that you buy. And that's, of course, just equal to the price vector times the commodity bundle vector. So this gives us a nice compact way to encode this obviously useful object. Now if the consumer has income I then it has to be true that P dot X has to be less than or equal to I. Right, so this, when this condition occurs, is called the budget set, right? So the x satisfying this inequality constitute the budget set. And there's kind of a nice picture. So let's do this for two dimensions. What, what would this budget set look like, say? Well, this is my x1, say, and this is my x2. And I've got this line, right? So the equation, uh, this equation when equality holds is equal to a line, so this is the equation p dot x is equal to i, and all the bundles in the positive orthont in this little shaded region are in the budget set. I can buy all of these with the income that I have. Right, so the prices are fixed, and x is, x is what I get to choose. 
Now for production, right, uh, the x's are input vectors and they form the input space. So this is for production. So if WI is the cost per unit of input, then well we form the cost per unit of input vector, then the, the cost of purchasing the, the bundle the input bundle is w dotted with x. Uh, and we can set that equal to c. And if we fix w and let c vary, then we get a bunch of different hyperplanes that are parallel to each other. And we can, we can examine the behavior of the system by looking at those. Now let's talk about the probability simplex. So, so this is a really useful idea. So the probability vectors are, well, they they form this set. So Pn is equal to P1 all the way up to Pn, such that Pi is greater than or equal to 0 for all i. And P1 plus all the way up to Pn is equal to 1. Right, so we call this space a simplex, and it looks like this in three dimensions. This, this triangle that kind of juts out, that hits every single one of the coordinate axes at the, at the first variable. That's what it looks like. Uh, and the, one of the easy ways to thinking about the, this space, right, this, this probability simplex, is you can think of each point as an in sided die and the probability of rolling i so I'm going to number all the sides 1 up to n so the probability of rolling i is pi right and an inside a die, well, that could be any state of a system. You know, it's just a die is kind of a useful idea. We all know what those are, right? Um, and now let's let's briefly talk about investment. So this our language now allows us to talk about portfolios and inve investment. So let's say that x i is a fraction of wealth. Right, so it's a fraction of our wealth uh, that we put in asset I. So we say that the resulting vector where I put all the xi's into the coordinates of this vector is a portfolio. Uh, and the, the one constraint is that I have x1 plus all the way up to xn is equal to 1, right? So these are all fractions of my wealth, so they have to be equal to 1. 1. 
Uh, however, since I can take short positions, so because of short positions, xi can be negative. So this is, a, this is a little different from the usual scenario. And if the market is in state, so I have a bunch of different states, right? State S, so I have a state S. There is a risk vector. RS and the return of an investment or of a, a portfolio is simply RS dot product X. That's really nice. And we say that a portfolio is riskless if for all states, so for the first state, so I'm going to index my states, I'm only, I'm, I assume that there are finitely many states, if this is equal to the return given the second state is equal to all the way up to RS, right, where we're at, this is capital S, and that's the, the total number of states. If all these guys are equal, it's riskless if, no matter what, I get the same return on, on investment, no matter what state the market's in.